All right, Gaming Geek here with another video, and this is whether or not you should cast plaster for your terrain or to 3D print. Now, there are multiple mold makers where you can cast plaster, but the one that I use the most is Hearst Arts. And if you don't know how to cast plaster using molds, go ahead and click on this video here that shows a little bit of the process as well as a number of the projects that I've made. So if you do not know anything about 3D printing, go ahead and click here of how I use my Flash Forge Finder 3D printer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pros and cons between casting plaster versus 3D printing. The first category that we're gonna look at is the cost which will give you more bang for your buck between these two methods. The cost actually is cheaper to cast plaster and buy molds. So at the Hearst Art site, you can see that most of his molds are anywhere between $29 to $34. The thing about the molds is once you buy the mold, you can make an unlimited supply of the basic building blocks that come with that mold. And I would suggest to you, if you are just starting out, to purchase Fieldstone Basic Block Mold, number 701, as well as the Ruined Fieldstone Mold, number 75. And that will give you a large range of ruins that you can make, buildings, walls, all that kinds of stuff. And if you're gonna make a dungeon, go ahead and spend $29 and purchase any of the floor sets. So with just two molds costing about $70, all you have to do then is buy the plaster and do not buy plaster of Paris because that will crumble and fall apart. You'll be so frustrated even gluing plaster of Paris bricks together, they will eventually come off. You wanna get at least hydrostone and you can get a 50 pound bag for about as much as you would buy a spool of PLA, anywhere between uh, $25 uh, to maybe $30. You can go to your local pottery store and order it there. So for the cost of about $100, you can make quite a bit of terrain. And so cost-wise, you're still gonna win out with using molds versus using a 3D printer because the upfront cost on a 3D printer is quite high. I know a suggested 3D printer is the Creality Ender 3. Uh, that is $230. The printer that I purchased a couple of years ago is a Flash Forge Finder. And these days you can buy that on Amazon for $300. You can go all the way up to uh, the printer that I wish I would have purchased in the first place, which is the Prusa Mark III, which is about $800 here in the US. If I were to get a second printer, it would be that printer just because the build plate is a lot larger than the five inch build plate that I have now on my Flash Forge Finder. The upfront cost of a printer is going to be a lot higher, even though the print material isn't that expensive. But at the end of the day, a spool of PLA is still going to cost you about $20. And that one spool will make maybe a building or two, a large building or two, versus again, a 50 pound bag of plaster is going to give you a ton of terrain. So at the end of the day, cost analysis, you're gonna win out ahead with molds. Secondly, let's talk about speed. So when I talk about speed of making and creating terrain, if I were going to have a tournament and I needed to come up with a lot of terrain quickly for, for this upcoming weekend, I actually would stick with casting plaster. That's because the printer, at least the one that I have, prints very, very slowly. I'm currently printing out a tower and it's probably going to take me three days just to print one tower versus the casting of the plaster. I can spend a day, uh, make about 15 to 20 casts with one mold and have enough bricks to create something like this, this tower over here, uh, which requires 18 casts of that particular mold. So, at the end of the day, even though I'm working all day to cast, um, I'll be able to do that within a day and then the next day glue it together and then paint it. So in a day and a half, I'll have a completed project versus a 3D printing, I'm waiting. Um, for example, the base level is gonna take 12 hours to print. Now, having said that, obviously when you set the printer to print, you're actually not standing there doing something. Whereas with casting plaster, you are 
or every 15 minutes after the plaster hardens, you have to take them out and then pour more plaster in. And so pretty much your day is taken up. Versus with 3D printing, you just set it to print and then you can walk away, even though it takes a longer time. But for some reason, I found a little bit frustrating with how long it takes just to print out one piece and find it more satisfying actually the speed that I can have when I cast plaster and make a piece of terrain like this in a day and a half. Next, let's talk about ease. And in this area, ease is gonna win out with the 3D printer. And that is because you have to build each one of these block by block. So think Legos. You have uh, really small blocks, usually an inch wide, half an inch tall, half an inch thick and you're building these blocks together, sheer number of building blocks and the details that you have might make the process complicated. Now, Bruce Hertz on his website has directions and you can just follow those directions and come up with amazing projects. But with 3D printing, all you have to do is go to Thingiverse or go to Printable Scenery or Dragonlock. Those are the companies that I go to and I can buy and download the file and have it up and running in the printer in just about 10 minutes. Now with that ease, you have the cost of um, not having as much versatility. And so because you have blocks, little blocks, you can create almost anything that you want. Maybe you can do that if you know how to 3D design on the computer. I don't know how to do that, so if I want a custom piece, uh, I'm stuck with just looking through Thingiverse or some of the other catalogs and tr hoping to find the piece that I need. And because of that, there's more versatility in having little pieces like this. And so even this piece that I made uh, and conforms to the original design that was for the game Rune Wars. And so every little piece makes it so that I can customize uh, these pieces. Uh, the other day I said, you know, I need some scatter train on the field. And so I threw these together really quickly and wanted an archway. So I made an archway. So really the versatility uh, comes with the smaller pieces that you have. So you're giving up the ease of using a 3D printer and just finding a design online with the versatility of being able to make any piece that you want. One thing that is a pain with plaster cast models is that it is a pain to store. You don't want to just throw these in a box. Because they're made out of plaster, they can chip or break. And so I've had to come up with building custom MDF boxes to store these things so that they're not lying on top of each other. On the other hand, with the PLA that you print, you're able to just throw them in a box, you're, you're able to store them touching each other, you can wiggle them around and not worry about it, they're a lot lighter, and definitely the convenience of being able to store the printed materials is gonna help you a lot if you're limited in terms of storage space. Now at the end of the day, probably the most important thing is the detail and how it looks. And this is where it sort of depends on your aesthetic. If you're making a piece, a sort of scenery where you're gonna put your model on uh, for a painting contest, you wanna go with her starts because you don't have any of the striation that you have with 3D printing. If you compare uh, this 3D printed wall of bricks to any of these bricks here or this here, um, the details on here are a lot better. You're still seeing lines. Now granted, I did print this at 0.3 rather than 0.1, which is the finer detail. But with terrain, I'm not gonna double the time that it takes to print this piece uh, just because it's terrain. Also, if you have a resin printer, then you might be able to get better detail. But at this point, at least with uh, regular 3D printers, you're gonna get a lot more detail with plaster casting. Uh, if you're making really small pieces like this scatter terrain, casting plaster is the better way to go. On the other hand, when you take a look and compare the, this cavern set, when you're standing you know, this far away from it, do you really care? Are those lines really noticeable? I, that sort of depends on you and how much detail that you want. Uh, I think it looks okay. Uh, th this 3D printed piece. But if you compare it to this, obviously this has a lot more detail. Will most people really care? I don't think so. I think most people will just say, hey, that's cool to have 3D terrain. I don't know if they're gonna nitpick in the same way 
that a hobbyist or an artist might between the two. And if you take a look at these buildings, because of the way that I painted them, um, you really can't see the lines very well. The details and appearance, I think the clear winner is gonna be plaster cast, but I think 3D printing, especially as the technology increases, is a real viable option. And then finally, between plaster casting and 3D printing, what about the cool factor? And what do I mean by the cool factor? These are some of the things that there might not be a fair comparison. One of them is being able to print in sort of this iridescent or clear PLA. And so the water that's in this fountain, uh, this wall of flames or this flame gout that's coming out of the wall. Uh, I think being able to buy different kinds of PLA and, and in this case clear and iridescent uh, gives it sort of that wow factor, that cool factor. As well, if you look at this video that talks about magnetizing these pieces, I think that's super, super cool. So being able to slide these pieces together uh, with magnets, being able to move this around. You can't really do that with the plaster one. It sort of falls apart when you try to move it around. Also, who buys a 3D printer and only prints 3D terrain for their games? So since I've got my 3D printer, I've printed all kinds of stuff, really nifty gadgets and things like that. My kids have a lot of things from the 3D printer. At one point they were giving away these little hearts that sort of twist around like a puzzle. There's that factor to take into consideration. So what are my conclusions? If you're looking into making your own terrain and you are enough of a hobbyist that you don't mind painting, you don't mind creating, you don't mind making, uh, which of the two would I recommend? And at the end of the day, I think it really depends. If you are a hobbyist, if you are a person who sort of looks forward to or thinks about how to design your own terrain, then I would definitely go with casting plaster. Grab a couple of molds. We joke around in the community uh, calling it plaster crack because there's something addictive about collecting these molds and making these pieces. There's an awesome community, online community, at Her Starts, uh, the forums, and you see these amazing ideas that people come up with. If you're like me, you'll eventually make your own molds. So this whole dungeon set, and I created a mold so that I could mass produce this. I also made a mold combining these together. And I use this for Simon games. If you're a hobbyist, if you like painting your miniatures just as much or maybe more than playing games, and you like to be creative, definitely I think plaster casting is the way to go. But if you are more interested in getting pieces on the board so that you can play as quickly as possible, if you're interested in transporting your terrain to a lot of different places, that you're not necessarily interested in designing your own pieces, but being able to print, or if you have other uses for a 3D printer, I would definitely go this route. But either way, I think you're gonna win. Either way, I think people are gonna be really impressed uh, when you show a table full of terrain that looks really good and really awesome that you invested time in. 3D printing still requires you to paint the pieces. And so if you're not interested in doing that, or if you're not really going to have a lot of pieces, I would just suggest that you buy the packaged terrain. So what are your opinions? Do you agree with me? Do you think uh, one is better than the other, especially if you have done both? Uh, what are you predominantly doing now? Go ahead and comment below, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos that talk about uh, both of these hobbies. We'll see you later.